This segment of the video training course will teach you how to repair a crack extending from a threaded bolt hole using C2F Castmaster stitching pins, L15 locks, and an FFB full torque thread repair insert. You can see the crack extending away from the bolt hole across the machine surface and down onto a rough cast surface. We start by using the drill bit for the C2F stitching pin and we drill our first hole just past the end of the crack. Drill all the way through the wall of the casting. We take the L6500 spacing jig, place the locating pin into the drilled hole and start drilling the holes for the stitching pins. This is the three-step method using the L6500 spacing jig. The jig has one locating pin and two drill holes. You do, do, drill the first hole and then go to the second hole and drill it through the casting. We're going to continue this process by moving the spacing jig to the last hole that we drilled and continue drilling along the crack. You can see we're making a step up onto the machine surface right here and the spacing jig handles that quite easy. just continue using the spacing jig and drilling the holes up close to the bolt hole. Remember we're going to put a thread insert in that bolt hole and it's going to actually get drilled bigger so we need to leave a little bit of space between the last pin and the bolt hole so we don't cut most of that last stitching pin out. Now we're going to use the spot facer for countersinking the top of the holes. So we're going to set the depth of the spot facer and compare it to a, the shoulder of a stitching pin. We want to put the shoulder about 50% below the surface in this repair. We have plenty of wall thickness so we want to use a lot of the shoulder down into the, the casting. This increases the strength of the repair. I put the spot facer into the drill, tighten the chuck and now we're going to spot face each of these holes. Just run it down till the edge of the stop touches the surface and continue along through all the holes. The depth of the spot face is critical. If you don't have it deep enough the stitching pins won't have any strength. If you go too deep in, in thin wall sections you would run out of threads or not have enough wall thickness left for threads. Okay, now we have all of the holes spot faced, and so we're going to put the tap into the tapping gun using this tapping fluid. Tap each of these holes. The pneumatic power tapper really speeds up this process and makes it go quick. We're tapping all the way through, so you want to make sure the tap goes down deep enough to where you can feel it start to get easy as it comes out the other side. You want to make sure that your tapping angle is the same as your drill angle, so it's helpful to use a loose drill bit to assure that your following that same angle. These taps will follow the hole on their own, but you've got to start fairly close to that angle if you want to end up with uh, a good threaded hole and, and to prevent breaking taps. So pay attention to the angle of your, of your tap. I'm going to use the 7, LHC 724 thread sealant in the holes. We go along here and do every other one. That way we can install a series of the of the pins. Let me go ahead and put the first one in just make sure everything goes exactly the way we want. 
run it down, break it off, looks good. So now we're going to install the other pins, starting them with a, a nut runner, it's much easier this way. And just run the pins down until they break off. And we'll do the remaining pins, putting the sealant in the holes. Notice that in the two pins on the left, where it's in the rough cast area, we're using a shorter pin than we are up on the machine surface where the casting is a little thicker. That's why we make so many different lengths of pins so that you can choose the appropriate length of pin to match the thickness of the casting. Now we just grind everything down real close. Be very careful not to grind into that machine surface because that's all valuable material and we don't want to have any low spots there. Grind the pins down close so we can tell where they're at. Now we start our second series of holes by drilling one hole down between the first and second pins. Again, drill all the way through. Now we use the spacing jig and we're going to skip to the second hole, making sure we don't drill on two sides of a previously installed pin. Now we're going to make the jump up to the machine surface. Again, very simple. Just put the spacing jig in and drill the hole. Okay, so we're going to actually move the stop up higher to allow us to cut because the edge of the spot facer is going to hit on the high side of that little radius. And let's set, double check our, our depth stop with the shoulder of the pin to make sure we're not going to go too deep. And we're going to spot face down in that corner. And then we'd have to change the depth of the spot face for the remaining two holes and bring it back to the same depth as it was before. Tap these holes. Put the sealant in them. We've sped up the tapping processes in some of these processes, but realize we are tapping them all the way down. It just looks like we're just barely going in and out, but we are actually tapping them all the way through, just like always. Put that stitching pin in, see how it fit into the corner there. Grind them down. And being very careful of the machine surface. On the rough cast side, we can actually blend them, and on this machine surface, we're actually just leaving them up just a few thousands. Now we're going to take a ball peen hammer and just kind of go around the edges of the pins, peening them down, making a nice metal to metal fit there so we get a good 